Hello, our friends. Today we have a talk on the meaning of Christmas, being uh, the uh, birthday of the gods in uh, uh, December, uh, the story of December, and followed by uh, the our study of the Bhagavad Gita at 12.15. The de Declaration of the United Lodge of Theosophists, uh, we'll uh, mention that and a couple of other items and then have the talk. The policy of this lodge is independent devotion to the cause of theosophy without professing attachment to any theosophical organization. It is loyal to the great founders of the theosophical movement, but it does not concern itself with decisions or differences of individual opinion. The work at hand has on hand, and the end that keeps in view, are too absorbing and lofty to leave it the time or inclination to take part in side issues. That work and that end is an ascension, dissemination of the fundamental principles of philosophy of philosophy and the exemplification and practice of those principles through a truer realization of the spell, a profound condition of universal brotherhood. And it holds that the unassailable basis for union among theosophists, wherever and however situated, is similar to main purpose and teaching and therefore has been the constitution of bylaws and our offices, the sole bond between us and associates being that basis. And he aims, he aims to disseminate this idea among theosophists in the furtherance of unity. In regards to theosophists, all who are engaged in the true service of humanity without distinction of race, creed, sex, condition, or organization, and it welcomes to its association all those who are in accord with its declared purposes and who desire to fit themselves by study and otherwise to be the better able to help and teach others. The true theosophist belongs to no cult or sect, yet belongs to each and all. Our devotional reading is from the voice of the silence, and another student will be giving that. The devotional reading today is from the voice of the silence. Uh, that which is uncreate abides in the disciple as it abides in that form. If thou wouldst reach it and blend the two, thou must divest thyself of thy dark garments of illusion. Stifle the voice of flesh, allow no image of the senses to get between its light and thine. That thus the twain may blend in one. And having learned to dine on Ashniaina, flee from the hall of learning. This hall is dangerous in its perfidious beauty. It's needed but for thy probation. Beware the new, less dazzled by elusive radiance, thy soul should linger and be caught in its deceptive light. This light shines for the jewel of the, of the greatest mirror. The senses it bewitches, blinds the mind, and leaves the unwary and abandoned wreck. The moth attracted to the dazzling flame of thy night lamp is doomed to perish in the visible oil. The unwary soul that fails to grapple with the mocking the demon of illusion will return to earth, the slave of Mara. Behold the hosts of souls. Watch how they hover o'er the stormy sea of human life and how exhausted, bleeding, broken winged they drop one after other on the swelling waves. Tossed by the fierce winds, chased by the gale, they drift into the iris and disappear within the first great vortex. If through the hall of wisdom thou wouldst reach the veil of bliss, disciple, close fast thy senses against the great dire hearsay of separateness that wins thee from the rest. Thank you. Thank you. 
And now I'm going to we're going to touch on the three fundamentals of uh, uh, the theosophy as presented uh, by the uh, um, the um, as presented by uh, HPB and the secret doctrine and theosophy and and uh, you know the rules of nature. And they are the first fundamental is is on deity, the unity of all existence, the root root of all that was, that is, or ever shall be. It extends beyond the range of human comprehension. It is beingness rather than being, and thought of as a great friend, the one reality. It is the dynamic energy that might be linked to that small voice that wells up within every individual soul, that consciousness that should be our God. Spirit, matter, soul life, embodied and unembodied. What people generally call God, is our deity, is an aspect of life. The omnipresent principle, which in the invisibly functions in the atom as in the cosmos, and which abides as itself in the heart of every creature. Another aspect of life is the law. People speak of the laws of God laws, God laws, the laws of nature. It would be more accurate to speak of God as law. God, life, self are not different from law. They are law. The spirit of the universe also, also surrounds us and is within all. We eternal pilgrims have the opportunity to become gods, or one with the absolute, through sustained effort. We honor the gods as superior beings to emulate, but not as being outside ourselves. The second fundamental is a law on the law, is a law on the law that brings out an analogy between the processes of nature in the cosmos and in the individual man. Day and night, life and death, sleeping and waking, karma and reincarnation. Man's lower principles disintegrate in time and nature uses them again with their various imprints from past uses to form new human principles. The same process takes place in disintegration and formulation of our worlds. There is a perpetual exchange of atoms correlating and changing their combining of the equivalents like the perfect flower dying in order to go into a perfect fruit. Man himself punishes and rewards based on his deeds. As above, as above so it is below. The third fundamental is on evolution. The whole order of nature is progressing, progressively washing toward a higher life in the cycle of incarnation or necessity. No spiritual booty or divine soul can have an independent conscious, conscious existence before the far from its essence has passed through every elemental form and has acquired individuality, individuality first by natural impulse up to the human stage, and then by self induced and self devised effort, checked by hormone. From the mineral and plant to the animal and human, and up to the holiest archangel, or Diane Buddha. Each entity must have won for itself the right to become divine through self experience. The physical evolves gradually from the spiritual, mental, and psychic. Elementals are all future men. No one has ever reached a depth yet in one environment. Each man has within himself the spark of an adept and can evolve into an adept 
through self-induced and self-devised methods, aided by, aided by masters of wisdom to the extent allowed by karma. So uh, with that, we will uh, turn it over to the speaker to tell us about the meaning of Christmas. Good morning, friends. And today we will talk about meaning of Christmas. This talk repeats every year. And uh, every year it keeps surprising me in its depth and uh, in the aspect of it that will be revealed and shown uh, just for a learning. And Christmas, the meaning of modern Christmas, the way we observe it becomes right now search for perfection. We all run around and we try to, at least for the Christmas, to make things perfect. When all the cards will go out and the presents will be wrapped and the house at last will be clean and everything will be done. When, uh, in fact, it is the state of imperfection and presence in what is, is the true meaning of Christmas. And th this lesson was given to the student yesterday because Everything that could go wrong was going wrong and needed attention that had to be given in that moment. Instead of perfecting something that uh, should have looked pretty. So this talk will be about being present in the moment that is. And uh, it goes very deep in the theosophical teaching that in the moment of Christmas, it is the solstice. So we're talking about Solstice, not really Christmas. This is the origin of Christmas. So when we look at the solstice, it's sol sistere. So sol sister is the solstice, and we're talking about winter solstice that takes place on December twenty first. So it's coming uh, right at us. And so sistere means when the sun stood in perfect balance between the north and the south it is the balancing act of the sun so the meaning of christmas is in the balancing act of our own souls that should stand still at least at christmas and be present in the moment that is instead of rushing for perfections accomplishments catching up not catching up reflecting on the past so in the term soul sister is the balance of stillness and this is very much what also is the premise of Buddhist teachings. It's the being present in the stillness of the moment. The, the winter solstice is followed by two weeks, 14 days. And uh, in 14 days, we will be celebrating the Asantical New Year. Now, in between solstice that takes place on 21st of December and the Asaphical New Year, there is one more event that is actually called Christmas, the December 25th. So we have now three dates. We have solstice at December 21st, we have Christmas at December 25th, and we have the Asaphical New Year. 14 days following the uh, uh, solstice. The, the exact date? Four. January 4th. January 4th, 14 days with January 4th. So there are three important dates. <laughs> and they're important for a reason because this is not only dates in our calendar or events that we celebrate. This is really an energetic flow of the uh, universe, of the cosmos that affects us, of the, its growth of the astral light and uh, beginning of energy flow that basically empowers every single beginning. So it's really a growth of astral light that carries out in our intentions forward. So that starts happening on 21st. And the exact references to this, this is basically uh, where the, uh, the, the, the descendants of divine energy of the solar lotus. This is December 21st. And also December 21st is noted as the descendants of the monads and their embodiment on Earth. What is also very interesting and very important. 
on 21st monads that are spirits basically descend and embody in whatever they embody on earth now following to the uh, december 25th this is the celebration of many births this is the celebration of the uh, birth of uh, jesus this is celebration of birth of uh, buddha uh, this is also celebration of uh, mitra so this seems to be the birth of God. If you can summarize the December 25th, this is the ultimate birth of God, whatever we mean by the word God, basically the birth of Adam on earth. So on 21st, the monads descend. On 25th, the divine in the human body is born. And then we we'll follow through the Psychical New Year where this energy is increasing and culminating at on the january 4th and then starts the uh, starts carrying us and all of our intentions into the new year and in a way starts the this balancing act of life so if uh, i will draw another picture so this is almost like a clock if we picture the clock of the year in a perfect way this is the 21st so this is the solstice and this is the balancing act where everything in us is in balance where we are in the moment of total presence of receipt of you know, aligning ourselves with the um, astral light and then from 21st we go to 25th and this is where the magic happens of the birth of the divine in us or of how it is named in buddhism the enlightenment so this is basically the celebration of when we're being born into our divine nature and then from here what's happening is we continue to easter and Easter is also not here just because it is the Easter equinox. Also a very, very powerful um, energetic point in the cycle. And again, we're talking of cycles. And at the Easter equinox, this is where we are dead to our material world and born in the spirit. So this is when the monad descends into us. Because they, when we read in uh, in the Blavatsky text that monads are embodying themselves on Earth, they are embodying themselves. The only place they can embody them is in the human flesh. There's nothing else to embody in the Earth that is uh, conscious. So they embody on 25th. This is where we basically possess the divine nature. And at Easter equinox cycle, the divine nature is a moment of self-realization in that divine nature. And this is why this was uh, the, uh, celebrated as Easter, as uh, basically the, the, the death of the human Christ and birth of the divine Christ. And from Easter, we proceed through the year. And this is the, I call it the act of disbalancing. So each month of the year on each event and uh, all the karmic um, connections, all, all the karmic uh, challenges that we're being uh, under pull us different directions to rebalance again in the time when the astral light is increasing in our intention to retain that balance. So this is a little bit about um, cosmology of the meaning of Christmas. And... Uh, when you look at the word soul itself what what soul symbolizes it is the sun but it is also meant as the sun the true one the one so sun is the one the ultimate principle and it is also the light in ourselves so this is our birth to the light within and um our balancing with the first principle with the uh, undivided and ununderstandable one 
The sun also in the pagan traditions was viewed as a light giver. So it is something that gives light, sustains light, without which life is not possible. So this is the celebration of uh, life and the birth of all opportunities in, uh, in us, in nature, and uh, in what we'll carry through the year. So this is the first point. And then again, oh, I missed here the January 4th. January 4th. And there will be a whole separate talk about that that we usually have. And uh, uh, the um, uh, the celebration of uh, uh, winter solstice began in uh, in pagan traditions and in all of the ancient mysteries. So we can trace the celebration of the solstice there. And in uh, pagan traditions, it was uh, you. We can find celebration of. Um, Solstice in Celtic tradition, in Scandinavian. Um, what is interesting is that it is uh, where, for, for the first time, there appears this symbol of not only sun, but a Christmas tree. And uh, why would this tree be linked? Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Why would the uh, tradition of the tree be linked uh, to? Uh, we, we have an expected participant here who have opinions. <laughs> so the, when we look at the Christmas tree, it is linked to the celebration of solstice. And one would say, what does the tree has to do with the sun? Now there is a very interesting. Uh, uh, answer to this is in the name of the English Christmas tree, because it's not a Christmas tree, it's actually a fir. It's a fir tree. And when you look at the root of the word fir, it does mean fire. It is the fire. It is foha. So it is really the birth of the um, spirit in us that uh, Christmas tree is uh, symbolizing. And it was again celebrated in many traditions, <laughs> along with summer solstice, uh, sorry, winter solstice, and birth of the um, uh, masters at different places and different times. <laughs> there is also a linkage to the celebration in the Mitriatic tradition. And the, uh, just to name everyone who was born on December 25th, that will be Buddha, Mitra, Bacchus, Adonis, uh, Osiris, and Apollo. So it's really the birth of this, of, so to say, of the masters. The Christmas tree was also sacred in ancient traditions. It was sacred to Pan and Isis. And uh, it was a pagan tradition of decorating Christmas tree uh, with pine branches during the um, uh, solstice festival. What is this, What is interesting to observe, and uh, I, I, in a way the students never found explanation to this, is why this tradition was lost after the uh, pagan times. It was lost all the way till 1830s. So literally it was... Uh, Arrival of Christianity, Christmas tree was considered to be a sort of a pagan symbol and it was excluded from celebration of Christmas until somehow it reappears in 1830 in Russia. So it must, and it must be in some, uh, uh, somehow the pagan traditions of Russian people that entered back and brought it into Christianity, but it was really that long. Then it was also accepted in Germany and in other Western cultures, but it came back to us as part of Christianity fairly late. So it literally took a break for 2,000 years. But again, Christmas tree is a symbol of fire within us and the birth <coughs> and the uh, the beginning of the growth of the astral light cycle and descending of the monads on Earth that takes place on 21st. 
Now, a little bit more about the, we already talked about the first meaning of uh, being still and knowing who we are, because only in that stillness we can really reconnect with who we are, uh, basically stopping uh, being the, uh, stop being, do, do, doing and start being. Because we became such a doing beings that we're, we should be called doings, not beings. So this is the time actually to stop doing and start being. Unfortunately, we do everything opposite. This is where we go on the hyperactivity of doing and uh, stop being. But the first meaning of Christmas is just that stillness and the knowing that our I. And uh, being in the moment that requires attention and not... Uh, conforming to what needs to be done. Now, the second meaning of, and this is the meaning of 21st. Now, the second meaning of Christmas, and that's the December 25th, is realizing our divine nature, that we are divine, we are the God. And uh, I have uh, selected a number of passages from the uh, uh, Gospels, from Christian Gospels, that refer just to that. And I would like to read them because they're very, very profound. Uh, this is Jesus saying in John, John 14, 12, and John 10, 34, which we can do greater things than he did. So we can do greater things that he did. We have that power and more. And he was referring to people as God in John 10, 34. Another passage says, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these. Then Jesus answers, it is not written in your law. I have said, you are God. And uh, the interesting part is that in solstice, the light, and we're talking about astral light. Now we're not talking just about the light. The astral light comes in the darkest point of the year. And um, I would like to make this reference also to enlightenment. But enlightenment doesn't come uh, as a result of a hobby or just desiring it. It does come often after the lightest moments in life, that um, the, the darkness is there for us to distinguish the light. And uh, seeing in that light that we are the divine beings and we can do everything that the masters did and to be a part of the one and indivisible first principle. And Christmas is time of the third meaning of Christmas. So first is, again, being still and knowing who you are. Second, realizing our divine nature. And third meaning of Christmas is uh, sacrifice. And that's a very deep the theosophical um, belief that we are not here just to enlighten ourselves, realize ourselves, our own potential, but to assist the entire world in this ascension. And we are there to assist those who come after us and there are masters who are leading us. And in this, uh, there is a very beautiful um, analogy of Jacob's ladder. In a Jacob's ladder, everyone is ascending into the heaven. And as we are stepping up on the steps of ascension, there are those ahead of us and there are those behind us. And uh, as we are reaching out to the masters ahead of us, and they're pulling us up and helping us in all the steps of ascension. In the same way, there is someone who is stepping behind us. And uh, should we look back and say, well, that person is ignorant, that person doesn't know anything yet. They are simply on a different step. So it is a ladder of humanity that is ascending in its levels of consciousness. So whoever is ascending, ahead of you hopefully will give us a hand and whoever coming after us should not be judged in the spirit of christmas but be helped to ascend along with us and often it does require sacrifice because it's easy just to worry about our own growth development achievement of our both earthly and spiritual objectives 
uh, but it is so important to look who is coming behind us. And on this, I want to return to the story of the Christmas tree and tell the story of the Christmas tree that I find to be one of the most <coughs> beautiful um, allegories for both life of Christ, for the meaning of Christmas, and uh, each one of our individual lives. And the story of Christmas of, of the Christmas tree <coughs> starts as, uh, as this. There is a Christmas tree in the forest, and it stands among many other trees, and all of the trees are gossiping who will be chosen for this Christmas, who will go into the house. And everybody wants to go there because they've heard that the tree that gets chosen will get decorated and celebrated and there will be presents and children every day will be looking at the tree and dancing around it. And it is, it is the, the most beautiful moment of tree's life. And they're all hoping that it will be them. And here comes the horses and the carriage and the uh, farmer and the ax and they choose a tree and they cut the tree and the tree says, it's painful, but it's going to be me. I'm the chosen one. I will be the one celebrated and decorated and will be there in the house with all the candy and uh, presents. And they carry her in the house. They put her in their room. And the uh, next day, what tree was promised really starts. The children come and they put beautiful ornaments on the tree and they put uh, lights and presents and uh, every day it gets better and better. The next day, guests come and they all look at her and say how beautiful this tree is and they sing along around the tree and then the next day and for 12 days of Christmas it doesn't stop. It is just fairy tale come true. And then there is the 13th day of Christmas and that's uh, December 26th and the tree says okay so today they're coming again and there'll be more presents and more singing and suddenly there's no light in the room it's dark no children nothing it's just that strange Where, where's the party did the party end and then the farmer's wife comes and starts taking all the ornaments off and all the lights and everything and she says well where is everything going i was promised that will last like forever this is my life now and everything is gone no lights no ornaments no presents she just stands by herself in the empty room no people no children then the next day it gets even worse uh the farmer comes and pulls her out of the water and throws her in a very dark attic upstairs and here she sits locked up in the attic it's cold it's humid, the, the branches start to dry up and rot, and there is no water. And she says, what did I do? What have I done for this to happen to me? I didn't do anything wrong. Everything was going great, and suddenly, bang, and uh, no fun, no singing, no ornaments, uh, no anything. And now I'm in an attic without water. Now I'm dying. I'm dying. This is what it is. And so she lays there dying, and she knows that it's not going to last long like this. She needs water, and the, the needle's starting to fall off, and uh, she's starting to look bold and ugly. And she says, well, now no, no one will ever look at me. Look, I am no needles. I'm bold. I'm ugly. I'm, I'm nothing. And then it gets worse. Then the farmer comes in and starts chopping her into pieces. So she says, I'm losing my limbs, I'm, I'm, I can't even, I, I'm nothing, I'm in the pieces. And then he gathers the pieces, brings it downstairs, puts it in the fireplace, and closes the door. And he and his wife sit there, and from shivering, they start looking in the fire, and they're smiling. And the tree is burning. It is burning and burning, and in that burning, she's thinking, that was my purpose. That's why I was here, to burn and give warmth to those who sit by my side. It wasn't to be pretty. It wasn't to be dancing with all the <coughs> rhythmic singing. It was to burn and give the warmth, and then they walk. So with this, I will um, uh, conclude on the Christmas tree story. And if there is any better meaning, it's yet to be found. But this is the, 
this the uh, third meaning of sacrifice that maybe the only meaning right here is for that sacrifice of our lives as all energy is borrowed we take it from the all we return it to the all and what we do with it that's what matters and if because of it the world becomes warmer and uh, the energy grows and the astral light increases and we all ascend in the jacob's ladder into the higher levels of consciousness, that may be the meaning of Christmas. And uh, the final words are on the from the song. It's a uh, it's on the tree of everlasting fire. And this is very interesting that here the tradition of the pagan fire and the fur get mixed together. So it's all the tree of everlasting lasting fire. Like, why would it be tree of everlasting fire? Well, it's a fur. So it was a play of words. I, I think it's English song. So maybe, maybe it was the Celtic root. It says, green with never dying life. From olden times, thy honor comes. And legends now are rife. So hear friends all, how did before? We like the tree on Christmas Eve. So this is how we should light the tree of our life. And on the Christmas Eve with a feeling of sacrifice, with understanding our own divine nature and in the balance of the present moment without looking back or expecting something in the future. So I'll conclude the talk with this. And if, if there are any questions, we can, we can discuss and share. You, uh, I think you took uh, what was it, 12 to 8 to 12 on uh, the time of the zodiac up there. The 12 kept coming up, and, mm -hmm. uh, and that is one thing that we have really lost uh, in our education system and so forth is how they how we can predict the future, the, uh, how uh, the masses predict the future, mm -hmm. and that's how mm -hmm. and we, we've, we've lost that idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was one point. The other point is, this is just a, this is part of this twelve cycle. This is this number twelve is uh, uh, to, to number one. That's the same same time of regrowth. Uh, you can shed your old body and put on a uh, new a new mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. uh, which tells me that uh, hey, this body is not permanent, but what we have within, within ourselves is permanent. Mm -hmm. It goes from what side to life, that goes all the way around the zodiac. Uh, and, and that's how you, you can tell from the, from the atom to the human to the universe. Uh, that's how, uh, how the masses really, uh, I think, can think, figure that's, that out that we can't. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we grow, we learn to figure that out. Yeah, this is this is so well pointed out because the two major modern fallacies of thinking is linear time and that everything just happens linearly. Well, the linear and time because everything is a cycle, and in a cycle there is no time. Yeah. It's just a cycle and. All nature is driven by cycles, our life driven by cycles, but we like to think linearly and that linear thinking producing time that actually doesn't exist. Yeah. yeah, when you think of the cycle, then all, all universe, all energy in the universe will always remain in the universe. So it just goes in a cycle. It doesn't go in a linear way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> To, to, to go around in a circle. It, 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 we, we hit that point every year this time where we uh, go to the time of rebirth. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the dates of uh, <clears throat> December 25th as the date for uh, three uh, avatars or deities. Uh, but they were born Mitra, uh, Buddha, and Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I heard that Jesus was born in January, actually, 
And then the, his birth was accommodated to appear to be on December 25th because it's a special time you mentioned the monads. And I wonder, in knowing this, or I would know, of mm -hmm. course, there's no way to know that that's true or not. But I wonder now that if the birth of Mitra and Buddha were also accommodated and these three adepts were better uh, thought, I don't know, fit in that, uh, in that uh, esoteric um, clock that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think if we don't know the year of Jesus' birth, we definitely don't know his date. Mm -hmm. It can be as, as well July 25th. We don't know. Um, it's probably symbolic that all of their births was aggregated to December 25th. There's probably mm -hmm. some energetic movement in the cycle why they all were energetically or spiritually born on that day. But I, I really don't think historically there's any evidence when he was born because even here, the century is not known. There's still debate among the historical community when exactly was he born. Mm -hmm. But if you read to us, say that there was a birth of Jesus Christ in that time period, uh, maybe maybe not at that name that uh, we, we see in history, but that a great being was born mm -hmm. about that time. Yeah. And the, yeah. Yes. But this is, this is energetically where the monads are descending, and I guess we're energetically in the cycle. The universe can produce this great masters. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. That just were that possibility opened. Is it appropriate to think of uh, in these cycles? Is not is is yeah. The, the individuals are, are representative of the perfected beings, but the cycle is there is is a is a wave of energy. And we can partake of this wave of energy just like these perfected beings can. Mm -hmm. And once we learn to do that, then we become perfected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think the celebration of Christmas specifically is there is just to help us to align with that energy. Mm -hmm. Like we're not really celebrating the birth, we are taking it to align with that energy of the masters. So the declaration says we hear and help and teach. And we not only uh, improve ourselves, but we help uh, man mankind and the lower lower beings mm -hmm. while we're here. That's our job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, absolutely so. And lower being is not only necessary on the human scale. People at different levels of consciousness. It's well, animals. Can... Like we had, we had a participant who decided to guard us. Who knows why at this very moment? <laughs> if they can do all that, why can't they just do it for us? Yeah. Well, we wouldn't. We wouldn't grow if we did if they did it for us, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, when, when you try to do something as a kid and your parent helps you, you don't get satisfaction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's later in our life as well that we have to do it ourselves or, or we will not get it. Are there questions? From yeah, is there questions online? <clears throat> They're mute. They're mute. No, no, I think they are. Not yet. I think we're enjoying the questions and discussion so far. <laughs> They're taking all that in. It takes a while to do that. <laughs> yeah. It is such a beautiful time of the year. You just yeah. being in the right spirit in it. Yeah. And that's why we talk about the meanings of Christmas. Yeah, it is. So we go through this cycle every year and we lose that 
what you were talking about. Yeah, that's what this, this, this balancing act, but it has to be there because life happens. We cannot be in a perfect still, um, we have to live our own karmic connections mm -hmm. and until we are free. You mentioned those specific dates in the cycle, the Siberian cycle and the clock you, you drew. Um, those are very, um, uh, the, 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 the clock pointing the, the solstice, equinox and the special specific dates. Instinctively, uh, people uh, think of that energy because January 1st, we know the Theosophical uh, New Year is January 4th, but not far from January 1st. Like people you think you might know about the energy and the impulse they may get because all everyone is making resolutions when the New Year comes. Yes. Because there's going to be that impulse, right? That we instinctively, having heard it perhaps from our, our ancestors or something, because I don't know where exactly that. Uh, uh, custom comes from mm -hmm. to make the resolution. Mm -hmm. So it must be this knowledge was preserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, that this is the time to make resolutions because energetically they all have the, the most potential to be carried forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't draw this, but there is the summer solstice. And uh, then we have equinox. Equinox. Mm -hmm. And summer solstice is like when you think of it, just even like in a common sense, this is the birth of physical. Mm -hmm. This is where all the fruits of summer and all of the physical attributes are born. So this is our physical birth. And then we go through the cycle of embodying the, uh, the light. Every step on the clock is preparing for, for the next one. Yes. That's how I see it. Yeah. Yeah, it is a cycle. And if we could understand to live on a cycle, mm -hmm. it would be so much easier mm -hmm. and be guided by uh, the energy of the cycle. Do you think the story of the Christmas tree would have been easier on the tree at the beginning, knowing that at the end, he or she, I don't know, it <laughs> would accept his fate, like, okay. This is what, what I was meant to to be at the end, to give a worm to this family. Because it was happy at mm -hmm. the beginning. No, I'm trying to relate to our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I'm afraid if the, if the trees would know what happens to them at the end, mm -hmm. they would uh, say, not me, not me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would yeah. want to be cut and go to yeah. the grass. Everyone wanted to be yes. chosen. Yes. This is the transformation. When you go through all the joys of life and you think you are the one and then you start losing all of that and then the real meaning comes. Yeah, but the real meaning... Uh, the you have to accept yeah, it. Also, the real meaning is Christmas and uh, what what is uh, done with the, with the uh, ashes. Yeah. That, is, uh, that regenerates... Uh, Another life. Like mm -hmm. Yeah, I see also the message of impermanence there mm -hmm. and acceptance, of course. Mm -hmm. And the fire that they yeah. fur is the life, right? Yes, the fur yeah. tree yeah. was uh, in fire to burn and produce energy. Mm -hmm. like it wasn't there to look pretty, it was to, to basically explode in the energy, to give that energy to that. Okay, okay. Transfer energy. Yeah, that's the, 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 almost like alchemical. Yeah, it was transmutation of energy. Like you, you're not here just to hoard energy. That's not the meaning. Mm -hmm. Like energy can't be hoarded; it's to be exchanged. It says so, so, so the voice of Zaz about pouring this source into another, another, another Yeah, energy. yeah, and that was the ultimate, like a big bang energy when it was burning. Yeah. So uh, when we look at the the exploding stars, maybe that's their sacrifice. For some reasons we don't understand. Mm -hmm. But then that is a sort of cycle too, because they talked about uh, uh, cremation being a good way of doing, uh, uh, doing that, because when you, when you cremate, then you uh, then the, the, the voices talked about 
for that for the land that uh, some people would consider that to be uh they take the ashes and put it in the ocean and uh swim the ocean if, mm -hmm. you, if you live the live the good life and so forth it uh helps everything around mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not measurable according to modern science but uh if if enough of that went on it would uh sweeten the ocean mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was an interesting event on uh, the Friday before Thanksgiving absorbed in space. It was a, a very, very high level of some cosmic radiation that they basically said cannot be produced even by explosion of a star. Like this, the explosion of the star cannot produce so much uh, this radioactive ray, whatever they in Utah they detected it. So the um, Supposedly, the, the only now uh, hypothesis what could be, and it was in a, I think it was like Milky Way void from where that radiation came from. So now they're having the only hypothesis that it can be produced by an explosion of one universe colliding with the other. That it is mm -hmm. such a great amount of energy that it can be produced with invisible universe. It's impossible. So it's very interesting, speaking of energy. So that I guess there are infinite multiverses in the physical space. We know it's all one, and sort of immutable and, and uh, endless uh, space and one. But uh, there there may be different physical entities that basically collide. So this was just we're not speaking even of galaxies. We're speaking of universes. Yeah. yeah. Because there's nothing else if in the galaxy, nothing can produce so much energy. There was some some parameter. I don't remember it was something because in what they measure it. But that was that was fascinating. So we took about the first fundamental law. We can't comprehend this because it's well beyond our human thinking. But uh the um it, it, it had to be some sort in the end, in the end, in the end, in the end, in the end uh, on a physical level as well as, uh, and, you know, and that has to come from somewhere, and that's the spiritual side of it, mm -hmm. which uh, people uh, tend to not recognize because you can't see it. Yet, if you couldn't, if it didn't exist, none of this would exist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carolina, I will be thinking about your question. Would trees be better off if they would know what happens yeah. to them? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm afraid all these trees will literally commit suicide. <laughs> they have to burn. <laughs> But but at the end when it happens, that's where we find meaning. Yeah. But that's just one way of one way that we uh, affect life is when we we get recycled, if you will, uh, through this this, this uh, product that we were talking about. We can talk about you know putting the ashes in the ground or whatever. That that also like uh, if you if you're embodied, mm -hmm. your know, course personality and so forth shows up comes out, but that is mixed in with the individuality. Mm -hmm. uh, the true truly individuality is a perfect perfect part of us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it comes down to this level of imperfection. Uh, so mm -hmm. yeah, it's a it's contain, contain recycle. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, so in a, in an example of the Christmas tree, the goal is to produce as much heat as possible. <laughs> you don't even burn out anyway. <laughs> so at least produce some heat. Yeah, but if, if the point we 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 got to keep in mind is that. Uh, Equality of that, the ashes. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Yeah, and also it shows us that uh, life is lived in stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, very much so that there are stages of being in a forest, stages yeah. of being celebrated, exactly. stages to be abandoned, stages to burn. Yeah. Now the, um, the, the story you told about the Christmas tree reminded me of, you know, how interdependent we really are and that we, you know, HPV said life is built up from the sacrifice of life unto life basically, and that it seems like once, uh, and I'm sort of just thinking here, once you get to this stage of the adept, it's like you're you're taking less but giving more, mm -hmm. perhaps. Mm -hmm. You know, we rely a lot on the sacrifice of other beings for food, for, mm -hmm. you know, our lives and stuff. But as the, as we progress and get to the stage of the adept who has more control over their vestures, they rely less on the sacrifice of others, but give more, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting. Yes. Yeah. Very, very interesting observation. Yeah. Very true. There's a passage that says, you take, you, you give to all, take from none. Mm. Well, I think that's what, uh, because when when you when you become perfected, you don't need. Yeah, you have very little yeah. need in that. Yeah. The uh, the Christmas tree stories from um, uh, Pinkola Estes, Clarissa Pinkola Estes. She's I would say one of the most notable storytellers of our century. I would say she's a. Uh, a Jungian psychoanalyst, and she collects uh, stories from all folklore. Mm. So I love her books. So there's always mm -hmm. some kind of insight. Mm -hmm. So she looks at all of these archetypes of what do they mean mm -hmm. of, of our stories and our folkloric traditions. Mm -hmm. So this one stayed with me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always it's always easy to go through these processes without even thinking about what you're doing. Just a Christmas for you know, story. Uh, uh, you, you, you go out and you find a tree somewhere, or you could bring it home and you decorate it and all that. All that has many. Yes. Yeah, that's us. Awesome. We go through the stage of being decorated, and, uh, and then we're in the attic or somebody comes see us. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's me on the stage and off the stage, right? Yeah. 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 That's so, uh, yeah. and, and being in the forest is you're still young, you're not chosen yet. There are many like you. What's going to happen to me in life? Yeah, but you know, being on the stage and just uh, a little bit of your children, you just as the fact that said that uh, the Reverend Average, uh, uh, the coronation is about 1100 to 1500 years from life to life. Mm -hmm. So most of much of the time, the time is being off the stage. Yeah. Just a little bit of that. Yes. On the stage. Yeah. yeah. All, all the other time you're holding the stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, with this, Merry Christmas. We'll take a break and then we'll return uh, to do the reading. Okay, the reading. we got a couple, we got another minute or two if anybody else. Thank you for a great talk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll resume soon. Five, 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 five. Yeah. Yeah.